yeah god humbled me real quick and that was a lesson that i feel my loves welcome back to my channel i am so happy that you guys enjoyed my last video if you haven't seen it yet i'll link it up here it was just my 2024 ins and outs a lot of you resonated with that video and i am so happy today's video though i'm going to share with you five lessons that i learned in 2023 and how they've changed my mindset the very first one is life can change in the blink of an eye and tomorrow is not promised this lesson stuck out to me so much all throughout 2023 because nothing nothing i had planned fell through throughout everything that was just going on it really made me think how you always hear you only have the present tomorrow is not promised but you take that for granted because your tomorrow seems to be promised you've never experienced the tomorrow is not promised until you experience it you never know what can happen you never know what's awaiting you never know if you only have today to do something so it makes me think when we have things to do and we just put it off what if something happens and that is something that you were supposed to do as if maybe it's it was an assignment from god and you decided to put it off for tomorrow not knowing that your tomorrow was not promised this really really just kept playing in my mind because i do have an internal war with procrastination i do sometimes just put things off for the next day the second lesson is to never say that could never be you never say that could never be you and don't judge people so harshly for their actions now this came to me because everything that i thought could never be me it wouldn't be me was me i was in every situation that i never thought i would be in because i carried myself a certain way i handled my affairs a certain way so if i was going in that path this could never be me i was wrong I was wrong it was me because God said so God wanted to teach me that you're not better than anyone it's not about this could never be you because I can make it you and it's a very humbling feeling when you think you're in control of things just because you do every single thing right doesn't mean bad things cannot happen to you I am very fortunate and I am very blessed that God has provided for me my entire life. I am very, you know, privileged, I can't even say. I grew up in a way where a lot of things I never had to deal with and I thank God for that. I thank my parents for that. But now, becoming a parent myself and being an adult, um, being responsible for myself and for my daughter, my perspective is definitely different on life entirely um a lot of things i i used to just judge people very harshly for like i don't understand why they act a certain way i don't understand why they make that decision i don't understand why this and why that and i found myself in those same situations that i used to say i don't understand why someone would do that almost um I never, I never, I, I was never someone who looked down on people. I never thought I was better, but I feel like that attitude, like I never under, like, I don't understand why it's almost like you're judging, you know what I mean? And I feel like the lesson for me was never say that could never be you because before I was in this position that I am now a mother a real adult i have all of these responsibilities honestly i used to always just say i don't understand why you know people do this and that like why would you do that almost like 
you so stupid for doing that you know what i mean and yeah god humbled me real quick and that was a lesson that i feel is honestly universal never say that could never be you because you don't know life the same god that give he takes and the same god who takes sometimes gives back and gives back a lot more and sometimes the things you're asking god he can give you in a multitude of ways and sometimes he might not he might say no i had to learn that judging people so harshly for the actions you never know why they did what they did even if you don't understand there's usually a reason why and the reason they do things that we don't understand is usually a strong enough reason to make them do it even if sometimes we look at it as something that is wrong it's usually a strong enough reason why people act the way that they do maybe you're not in their shoes but it could be you reacting that same way one day so try not to judge so harshly and i just had to learn that to just even if i see you know people living their lives a certain way i don't understand it's almost like it's none of my business right like who am i to say oh my god like why are they da 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 like this could never this could never be me it's none of my business that's not my place this, that is not why i'm here oof i had to learn that yeah the third lesson is everyone is dealing with something silently it doesn't matter the skill it doesn't matter the skill but everyone is dealing with something silently so be kind the older i get the more difficult the some things are for me to deal with and you know i have family members and i have people around me that would try to minimize what i'm going through in comparison to what somebody else is going through now i'm guilty of doing that as well but i feel like in trying to minimize what i'm going through or what someone else is going through in comparison to someone else so comparing alicia to maria right saying or i know maria so i'm not gonna say maria i need to say a name i don't know comparing alicia's problems with diana's you would say well whatever alicia but that's your perception though it's whatever you perceive whatever alicia is going through is not as bad as whatever diana's going through and i feel like that's not our place to do that because everyone is dealing with something even if it's silently because not everyone wants to talk about their problems it's just about it's just because of the way we were raised not being able to trust people not being comfortable with ranting or not wanting people to say we're complaining some people are just not comfortable with that just by character but it's not up to you to it's not up to you to decide that whatever alicia is going through is not as much as whatever diana is going through because everyone deal with things differently and everyone handles things on a different capacity so something that could seem very minor Minute to her might be a big deal to her so I feel like the proper thing to do is to always be kind to just everyone be kind to everyone and do not negate their feelings do not make people feel stupid but for feeling a certain way about something because a lot of things are tied to our feelings the reason why these things come up sometimes is past trauma sometimes it's just from phobias sometimes it's a lot of different things that can make someone act a certain way for something's going on you know what i mean and i i just i had to keep reminding myself everyone is going through something you're not the only one going through stuff so the tendency to ask why me why not you everyone else is dealing with something so if they're dealing with something it could also be you you could also be dealing with something so i really had to learn this why me why is this happening without really 
wanting to learn something just asking why me or why is this happening i had to cut that because um yeah everyone is dealing with something there is uh, specifically specifically last year i can name five different people that were going through different things but all at the same time family members being sick people could not pay their rent so many things family dying sickness moms with cancer <sighs> let me tell you guys a story it's not a story because it really happened last year i started a new job i don't know if i mentioned here on youtube but i did mention a little on instagram and while i was doing orientation the general orientation we went to another hospital to do our orientation and while i was walking down to go to lunch i met this mother it was a haitian woman she didn't speak much english she was holding a baby the baby was maybe 12 to 14 months and she was also pregnant. So she asked me to translate for her, which I was fine with. So we went over to the OB section because she wanted to know how far along she is. But she looked pretty big to me, but I didn't say anything, you know, because I just imagined she doesn't speak English, so maybe she never went to the doctor or whatever. Um, when we got there, they asked her how far along she was. She didn't know. They asked her, has she ever seen a doctor before when she got pregnant? Did she get prenatal care? It is then she proceeds to explain that she didn't have time for prenatal care because the little baby that she was holding that was 12 to 14 months, no older, he was sick. So he needed attention, right? She said, oh the baby is very sick i had to keep taking him for his chemo sessions when i heard that all of my problems seemed so small this is a one-year-old with cancer with a mother who is pregnant and doesn't really speak english and from my conversation with her this is a mother who doesn't understand the ex who doesn't understand the extent of the disease that the baby has all of my problems at that moment seemed so small this is an innocent baby having to take chemo for cancer I was just shocked because I've heard of that before. I've seen commercials of babies, young babies having cancer, babies being born with cancer, but I've never seen it in person. I've never seen someone who, who was actually going through that. And to stand next to that little baby, that innocent baby, even going through all of that he had no idea what was going on he was still so happy so innocent still so kind and i immediately felt so bad for the mother and I, it's just it puts life into perspective you know what i mean everyone is going through something we just have to be kind that's all the rest of the things it doesn't matter the scale you know what i mean this one could have a dog that died this one could have a family member with cancer like we don't know the extent of why they react the way that they do so it's not up to us to minimize this person who just had a dog that died minimize their situation because this person has like a worse hand to to deal with it's all perception it's not us because all of it is bad sadness is sadness it doesn't matter you know what i mean hardship is hardship it doesn't matter but i that really broke my heart um man like that's so yeah that was lesson number three 
All right, lesson number four is overconsumption distracts me from the real stuff. I I used to just overconsume. I'm sad, okay, I'm going to the mall. We're gonna have retail therapy. I never really sit with my feelings because if I'm sad, I just do something to get rid of the sadness. So I'm sad, I eat. I'm sad, I go shopping. And the shopping temporarily just mask the feeling, just cover the sadness with a happiness, which is a fake happiness because as soon as I get over the high of having a new item, I'm right back to the way that I felt before. Um, I was someone who used to keep, I, used, I was someone who kept brushing how I feel, my little episodes of depression, um, naturally um, embracing how I'm feeling, just doing something to get rid of it. Oh, I'm sad. Okay, I'm having one of my episodes right now, so I'm gonna go to the mall. I'm having one of my episodes right now, I'm gonna get my nails done and my hair done. And then the vanity of that kind of makes me forget that I am in that depressive episode, but I never deal with that. Why do I think those episodes keep coming up? I have undealt with trauma, things that keep presenting in different ways. So the overconsumption is just distracting me from the real stuff that I have to deal with. And I've decided overconsumption is not for me. I don't want to keep overconsuming, buying things and clouding my mind with things with fake news with fake emotions and just make believe things so that i don't have to deal with the things that i truly feel in my heart that was a hard pill to swallow and the way that i learned that overconsumption was what was just keeping me from the real stuff is because i couldn't overconsume last year I had to dial it back. I couldn't buy anything. I was on a strict budget. And that is when all of the things came to the surface. All of the things. I had nowhere to hide. I had nowhere to go shop, do something, go blow money on craziness. I had none of that. So I had to sit with the real stuff the real feelings, the raw me, the parts of me that I don't like, the parts of me that I wish to change, the parts of me that I didn't even know. All of that just came to the surface. The parts of me that I'm ashamed of. And I've decided it is time to stop hiding behind material things and really take my future in my own hands and decide to deal with those traumas that will literally keep me in a self-sabotage cycle. If I don't deal with whatever it is that I got going on, if all I do is keep over-consuming, my future is not that bright. And that is the reality that I just, it was hard for me to accept but it's the truth. Making those changes cannot happen all at once. It has to be little changes that will yield to just a bigger change. And once you realize, oh my gosh, I did it, that's because you've been doing the work little by little by little. It's hard. It is hard, but it needs to be done. If we're gonna propel ourselves forward, if we're gonna propel ourselves and position ourselves for a better life. Because what would happen is every two, three, four steps you make forward, the self-sabotage is gonna kick in and you're gonna make 10 steps back. So even if it seems like you're moving forward, you're gonna keep going back. I had to sit with myself and really just accept like girl you need to stop like you need to deal with this stuff right now you need to deal with this you right now oof that lesson was hard it was a hard pill to swallow which leads me to lesson number five and that is to go with your gut feeling 
even when it displeases other people. So hear me out. I'm not saying to just disregard everyone's feelings and doing whatever you want, even if it hurts other people. That is not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is your gut feeling, you have an intuition, especially as women. We have an intuition that if we learn to listen to it, we probably won't be wrong 99% of the time. And we also have an intuition, if we take care of it, we will know what to do, we will sense it, we will, because we are spiritual beings. And I had to understand that, like, I have a gut feeling that sometimes I don't speak up about. It's in my gut, I feel it in my gut when I tell you I feel it in my gut to not do something and I go against that, it's always bad. It's never good news. So I'm starting to learn how to trust my gut just a little bit more, but I feel like the process of trusting my gut, a lot of people are not pleased about it because when I trust my gut, I go against what people think. What people think is right, what people think I should do, what people think I go against that because that's not what God placed on my heart. But then I have this battle and this war. It's like, do I go with my gut or do I, you know what I mean? I don't want to make this person mad. I don't want to. So I'm balancing, trying to go with my gut, but kind of like not do too much, you know, try to compromise and no, sometimes going with your gut, there's no compromise. You don't have that option sometimes. And if you know it in your heart and you know it and you know it to be true and God placed it on your heart, you have to see it out. Because if you go the other way, most likely you're going to you're going to hit some hard stuff because you're doing something that God told you not to do. And I had to learn that. I had to learn that the hard way. It was not easy. I'm still learning that because I'm still learning to trust my gut. I'm still learning to listen to my gut, to my intuition. I am very intuitive. I don't know if it has something to do with the fact that I am an empath. But I am very intuitive. God blessed me in that way. But unfortunately, I've never trusted my intuition enough to even if I can kind of detect what could happen if we go this way, I probably will still go this way or, that, you know, the other way. Like I don't go off of it even when it is almost always right. So I had to understand that if I feel it in my gut and I feel it in my heart and I feel so strongly about it to go for it as long as I'm not blatantly hurting anyone I think people's emotions can be hurt displeasing myself and God because of other people you don't want to make them mad and you don't want to you don't want to step on top like that's not that's not a reason and boundaries my boundaries i have to stick to them and i have to enforce them and reinforce them and just have so many boundaries because i am someone who just pick up on other people's energy and sometimes that can be a lot for me to deal with it can be a lot for me to deal with their energy and my energy and his energy and her energy. All of those that I have to deal with and their feelings and what's going on in their lives. And I kind of take that on and I'm trying to process my own feelings and the, everything else that's being added on. So my intuition, man, when it says no, I kind of have to go with no. And when it says yes, I probably should go with yes. And that is something that, you know, I'm still learning. It was a very big lesson for me in 2023. Everything I went against, um, every time I went against my intuition, I, yeah, I fell. I fell hard. Yeah, man. So these are five hardcore lessons that I learned in 2023. And... I'm grateful for it because they have changed my mindset 
and I just see life in a whole new light. And um, I hope my experience and these lessons that I've shared can help you in your walk and your self-development. And you know, if you're going through things, just know there is a light at the end of the tunnel. When there's rain, eventually there will be a rainbow. Sometimes it rains for a couple of days and even a couple of months before you see the sunshine again. But eventually it will come. I honestly love fashion and I love beauty videos and I love vlogs and I want my channel to be very lighthearted. But at the same time, I want to provide a safe place where women can come and feel welcome and feel like they're not alone in their walk they're not alone in whatever it is that they're going through because i do know all of us go through things but i also want to show you guys a side of there's a light at the end of the tunnel um i will for sure still be doing fashion videos because we still have to look good too you know but at the same time i want to do it in a way where i'm not pushing over consumption on you i'm not discarding and removing the real stuff that's going on in the world and in our lives but i also want to make space for it um so yeah i really hope you've been enjoying these videos i hope you enjoy this video if you have any topics that you'd like for me to speak on or any videos in particular you would like to see from me you can comment them down below or DM me. I'm wearing this by the fireplace right now and I feel so cozy. Ugh. And to think I stopped liking these strong kind of perfumes, but I put a little dent in it, you guys. Like I've been really wearing it this winter and I really like it. I feel really, really cozy with this. Yeah, anyway. It is literally 2.45 in the morning right now and my eyes were shutting down. I had to drink a Celsius to keep me up to finish this video because, oh my gosh, I am so tired. Which makes no sense because I work at night. Right now, 2.45, I would have been at work. So I don't even know why I'm so tired, but the show must go on. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, you guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!